There was not one time where we looked at each other and were like, I don't, I don't think we should do this. Or do you think this is a good idea? Or shall we just try and go back to our old jobs? There was not one time. And we didn't even have to discuss that. Like as a couple, we were both on exactly the same level. We both knew what we didn't want to do and we knew what we wanted to do. And we knew that we were on the right path because even though we encountered like these uncomfortable situations, we were still in what I believe like a flow state with it. Like good things would happen to us a lot of the time Mm. and that would keep us like continuing pushing forward. so great to have you on the show thanks for having us justin Justin. good to see you yeah this is so fun well it's very rare that i have an episode where i have two people on at the same time i think i've only done it once before with um chris and rob taylor Uh uh, which is a really fun episode kind of contrasting bootstrapping to uh, venture capital and what ways best to kind of start a business. And uh, for those of you that haven't checked that out, check it out. It's a cool story, but I'm going to, you know, just spoil it for you. For their (laughs) story, it basically showed up the same. Each of them had an exit. Each of them had different valuations, but their take home was within, you know, just a handful of dollars of each other, which is pretty crazy. That's incredible. Cool. Um, So it's fun having you both on. Uh, It's it's a blast. Uh, You know, for me, it's it's so cool having, you know, friends that I work out with that I think are just epic at what they do and uh, get a chance to showcase you and showcase your work. And so I'm I'm thrilled. We've been talking about this for months. So yeah, for uh, long, let's go. For a long time. It's, it's very exciting. And uh, yeah, as you know, Steph and I are always joined at the hip anyway. Sometimes we get confused as one person. I think I think <laughs> Steph's even being she's not even Steph anymore. It's like it's, it's like Rose. It's she's being called Rose because it's Jay and Rose instead of Rose. instead of Steph and Jay Rose. So <laughs> well I like that. You know yeah, that's, two individual people. Yeah. Man. That's great imagery for you, Steph. That's right. nice. That works for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, for those of you that don't know Jay and Steph, these two are freak athletes that are doing amazing things in the gym. I have the privilege of watching them and basically staring in awe, hoping that one day uh, I'll be able to do the things that they're able to do. So uh, you set quite the example. I appreciate that. Oh, That's thank very you, kind. Thank well, you. It's, it's always good seeing you in there. Like, uh, when when we met, I think you just you just started, and um, With watching your your progress as well has been incredible because um, you, you have a an incredible amount of dedication and discipline, you know, um, in, in what you're doing in the gym, and, and we ourselves have noticed the the progress within mm-hmm. you. So it's it's a really cool place to be, you know, that t- to match those types of energy levels. I feel like it makes us better as well. Well, I appreciate that. That's uh, super kind to you guys. And, you know, it it is fun when you can see the progress, right? So for me, I generally walk around as a pretty thin guy. So I've got to work really hard to put on muscle. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, you know, this is this has been Mm -hmm. great working out with, you know, an elite trainer. I mean, this is (laughs) the guy I'm working out with rain, I I should have him on the podcast sometime. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's that's, that's when you that's when you know, you're doing something Well, that person's doing something right, because you you really notice the progress with rain and and rain walks the walk and talks the talk, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, He does exactly what what he does there's no there's no gimmicks or anything like that he he can lift you know a 200 pound elephant yeah that <laughs> man is big to. he's legit <laughs> Well, it's uh, it's fun having people that also have really cool accents on the show. So, you know, you guys already sound so much more intelligent than most of my guests. Uh, You know, so I'd love to hear your guys story of like how you met and what brought you to the U.S. Because, um, you know, Jay, you're from Australia Mm. originally, right down under. And Steph, you're from the U.K. originally. From and London, and yeah. you guys met somewhere in your travels and then decided, hey, we're just going to do this travel thing and this life thing together. So, yeah. Um, yeah, tell us about all your travels. So we met in London, actually. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, I haven't lived in Australia for a long time. I, I St- Steph, yeah, I mean, I was I was born there and then I ended up moving to London um, and, and working, you know, some retail and then some corporate work office work and stuff i I started off in like 
you know, admin and then worked my way up into corporate. Um, it, was, it wasn't, as you can tell, it d- didn't really match who I am as a person. Um, yeah, if you're listening, not watching, Jay has this massive beard. I told him, uh, I can actually see what you look like because you're not wearing your sunglasses or your hat. Right. Yes, it's usually just, it's, you can only see just about eyes. just here. My That's cheeks. right. The rest is a hat and my my uh, sunglasses just and beard. Yeah. Massive beard. So, so uh, yeah, I, I was walk- working in corporate in this corporate job that basically was, um, they would tear down like, uh, like poor poor areas and then build multi million dollar um, apartments there. That they were doing that across the board and it, it really didn't suit me. I didn't didn't like the work, but uh, the reason I stayed in it is because I wanted to understand the language when speaking to corporate people. So when I do transition into doing whatever I did, I had that communication available to me. So uh, I was I was working in this place and it was it was not too far from a gym that I went to. And I was I was pretty much just starting training then, and then this one day, <clears throat> I was looking out the window and I saw this gorgeous woman walking across the the parking lot, and I, I was in awe. And and she came up and I saw her. I still remember what she was wearing creepily, but um, it's okay because we're <laughs> together now. So, um, well, now it's romantic. Before, yeah, yeah it's it romantic. Exactly. It's not creepy anymore. Yeah. Uh, and. Um, I remember telling the guy I was training with, the only other guy who who I was working with who did, you know, go to the gym. It's like I would do anything to be with that girl. So this was on like a Wednesday. And then I was like, next time, next time I see her, she uh I, I'm gonna have to speak to her. And I've never approached a woman before or anything like that, especially in a public, public uh situation. So it was a Friday and um Steph, Steph came into the gym with her mom because her mom's a Pilates instructor and they used to work out together. So um, she was doing our thing and I, I was kind of finishing. So I thought to myself, you know, I'm, I'm going to wait downstairs because there was there was an area where you could have food and have drinks and just see if she comes down. And if she comes down, then I'm going to, you know, go and speak to her and introduce myself. So, of course, I'm sitting there and I'm getting down to like the last bit of my drink, just sipping it slowly to see if, you know, this is going to happen. And, um, of course, Steph comes down with her mom and and they sit at the table like opposite me. And um, even more intimidating to go up to her with her mom there. Exactly. And the the thing was, all I could hear in my head was that uh, I don't want to pronounce it. It's like carpe carpe diem. It's like seize the moment. Yep. That's all that kept on playing in my head. I was like, okay, I've got to do it. So I I went over and I I kind of I, I was having a I had I had actually have a fractured tailbone and I kind of used that as a thing of like, oh, I really need some core work done and everything like that. So I used that as a segue to get in um to the conversation. <laughs> and then uh, you know, we were speaking and it was going really well. And then I just went, do you mind if I sit down? And before they could say yes, I sat down and we carried on speaking <laughs> uh, to <laughs> Steph's, Steph and Steph's mom. The the funny thing is, by the end of the conversation, I didn't end up leaving with Steph's number. I ended up leaving with Steph's mom's number um, for the Pilates <laughs> that I needed, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, hey, sa- safe approach. I like that. Right. <laughs> so, um you know, and and Steph and her mom were, were really great and really welcoming, and it was just really nice to to meet them. And then the Monday, I didn't see them over the weekend come in, but the Monday, uh, Steph's mom came in without Steph. So then my my cover was blown because I went up to him and you know mentioned about the Pilates again. But then I was like, so um, where's Steph? <laughs> and that's when wow. that's when <laughs> Steph's mom knew that it wasn't anything to do with Pilates. I just wanted to you know. <laughs> Uh, meet Steph. So, uh, funnily enough, it's actually Steph that got my number through um, my mom, her mom, and then we started training. We we our first date was training together in in the gym. Um, well, that's very fitting. I yeah. love that. Right. But we we were very at the start of our like you know yeah. what what you see now. We didn't we didn't have nearly as much knowledge then. But it was it was just a great connection and. And pretty much since that date, we've been together 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that was that was eight years ago. Wow, mm-hmm. that's awesome. And and Steph, did you have any idea what was happening? Did you think this was just a nice guy that wanted to talk? Or were you like, hmm. I mean, I kind of knew. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had my suspicions, but then I didn't want to 
I think that just in case that wasn't the case because that's super embarrassing. <laughs> so I just kind of went along with it. But um, I remember leaving that dinner and I was really excited. Like I didn't oh, even awesome. know Jay, but I was like, he's really nice. I love it. Well, that's so cool. And you guys have been able to travel the world. And and mm-hmm. by the way, we're going to talk about uh, how you've built and scaled, uh, you know, the, this huge uh, media company. And and you guys have an incredible online presence and, and following on social media. So I want to get into that. But I love always learning about the story before it becomes, you know, the, the big thing that everyone knows. Mm-hmm. Sure. And so it, it wasn't always like you guys were rolling in the dough and everything was working. <laughs> I mean, generally, there's some growing pains. And I'd love to hear just some of the hardships as you built phase six mm-hmm. and then we can transition into all the cool stuff you're doing today yeah. the brands you're partnered with the the epic work that you're doing the cool dojo that you just built here in austin i mean there's so much to talk about but right. let's hear about like the early days yeah so i mean pretty off, after that date uh we we realized that we wanted to spend uh, after we'd met we realized that we wanted to spend like every day together and you know um our current employment situation wouldn't allow that. So, and and it was also just not something that we wanted to do. We we were also in the UK and we realized that we really didn't want to live there. Uh, It, it it wasn't a place we wanted to, you know, settle down or buy a house or or even attempt to buy a house there, you know, Um, the weather's crap and all that kind of stuff. So the the plan was, you know, I I, I ended up um, mutually parting ways with the the company that I was with, and and you know, once I did that, Steph I decided she, oh, she nice. would do that as well. And it's comical was, even thinking about you working in corporate America. I mean, uh, knowing you, knowing like yeah, how you walk to the beat of your own drum. I mean, it is very <laughs> funny to think about. Yeah, it's it's we tried. it's interesting as well because I really wanted to do like. I wanted to get in that department of like advertising and marketing, but they wouldn't allow me to do it because I didn't have like you a degree. Clean cut. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, degree. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have a degree and they wouldn't allow me to do it. So it's interesting now ha- seeing as I, ha- uh, Steph and I handle all the marketing and, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. everything else we do like, is we were denied that back then because of like a, a, a piece of paper, you know, um, that's funny. The, so, the piece of paper that it has become more and more irrelevant every single day we're alive. Right. Exactly. And um, so we ended up deciding to move to Australia. And because we were both unemployed, we didn't actually have any money to move to Australia. So we decided to uh, – <laughs> Steph got a loan out of about 5,000 pounds, so like 6,500 yeah. US dollars, I think. So, But that to that at a t- at, at that time it was like was, 600. Yeah, you could have said 600,000. <laughs> That's how much we thought we had. So we decided on the way to Australia, we'd stop in Thailand and Bali, and then we'd get to Australia, you know, to break up the trip and enjoy ourselves. And uh, by the time we got to Australia, we didn't have any money left. <laughs> so we, we had about, we had about enough for one week's rent in this place that we stayed at in the Sunshine Coast. Fortunately, we made really good friends with the, the owner of this, like, uh, it's like uh, temporary accommodation like, for vacations, yeah, basically. Vacation so house. it's like apartment buildings, but only for vacations. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, she managed to get us into a place that was um, a, lot cheaper. a lot cheaper and, and more permanent. But we, we, could, we didn't want to go back into like the rat race of finding a normal job. So w- we, we decided to, you know, earn money for ourselves. And this was the first time that we'd, we'd gone down that route of being like in entrepreneurship basically. Um, it's, I think it started um, with the woman who we had made friends with f- for the apartment complexes. She needed a website made for their company. And I was like, oh, you know, I just made one for us just playing around. Let me do one for you. And she was like, yeah, sure. 3000 Australian dollars. Good for you. I was like, yeah, that's great. Okay. <laughs> let's go. And I just made like this website for her. Yeah. And, and I, t- I took <laughs> over there and, and we'd build up a passion for, you know, social media and, and me- marketing and all that type of stuff. So we were, we were learning, but mm-hmm. you know, we would never have thought that we'd start getting paid for that type of stuff straight away. Um, but again, it wasn't the <laughs> stuff that we wanted to do. And then on the side of that, I, I did, to make some extra cash, I started Ubering. But then I didn't like that the cut was being taken from Uber because 
I would, I would Uber for hours and the car that I was renting, it would only pay off the car that I was renting because it had to be a certain type of car to work with Uber. So um, I, what I would do is I would, com- I would Uber and then collect clients from Uber and then convert them over to my private car hire company. <laughs> um, and, and then they would just call me whenever they needed a ride. And Smart. then Steph, Steph started a, a raw, raw cake, cake company. company that was okay. like gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. But she'd spend about six hours creating these awesome, they were awesome cookies and, and treats. But six hours for about 50 Australian dollars. Uh, wow. <laughs> per batch. Yeah. But the, the best part about it was is that we were we were doing stuff for ourselves and we were earning money. And it was it was almost like a catalyst to creating phase six, because phase six wasn't even an idea then. So we were doing that for a while. And what we realized quickly was that we're still not pursuing our passion. And our passion always came back to things like unconventional training, mm-hmm. uh, you know strength and mobility, all that type of stuff. So I was like, okay, how how do we do that? It took us around a few months to to figure out the name. And this one day I was having a dream and all these like phases of six came into my into my head about athletic performance and just general general stuff with physical strength and fitness. And I woke up from it and I uh, Steph was awake and I was like, I just had this weird dream of all these phases of six. And Steph was like, that's it, phase six. So then we developed the the logo and everything like that, which I can go into mass detail exactly why the logo <laughs> is that way. And it's very personal to us. When you see the logo, it isn't just a logo that that's created from our soul, basically. It, 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 every single part of it has a meaning to us. Um, but we just wanted something bold and iconic, something in the same way of like a Harley Davidson logo or something like that, you know, nothing, um, simplistic. It just mm-hmm. needed to be really in your face, almost punk rock style, you know, um, I love old, it. old school rock and roll. Uh, and this is, so you were still in Australia at this time, right? Yeah. And, and by yeah. the way, I love that you guys took a stop in Bali because that's where I proposed to my wife. Oh, amazing. Oh, uh, nice. So we love Bali. We had an epic trip there and to Singapore. And I mean, that whole part of the world is is so fun and so cool. And I feel like it's, uh, mo- most people have never been. I just want to, you know, highly recommend that people check it out. Yeah, for sure. We stayed on both, uh, we've st- stayed on both sides of the island, um, it's really cool and and they're really advanced in things like sugar free dairy free uh food yeah and and that probably bodes really well for you Steph because you do a lot of nutritional therapy at least that that was kind of like uh in your you know uh, the like the foundation days. of of how you began some of your work right right, right. yeah so um just quickly going back to London, I that's where I got the diploma for nutritional therapy. So it was like a three year intensive kind of course for adults. And it included like one year of biomedicine as well. So that was like my, my foundation. Um, I went away from that thinking that I wanted to be a nutritional therapist and like see people one on one. So I tried doing that for a little bit. Um, but it didn't, it didn't satisfy me because people wouldn't listen to what I was saying. <laughs> so I feel like I would go away and create these crazy plans that were really in depth and, you know, really wanting to help these people. And then they just wouldn't follow them. So I'd be like, oh, okay. So Sounds I about quickly right. <laughs> realized <laughs> that that wasn't for me and that I had learned that for a reason. And that was to keep myself and Jay and the people I love around me healthy yeah. and, you know, be able to go about a day as best as we can. But um, it made me realize that I wanted to be more within movement. Yeah. So originally, like, Jay had the idea of, like, being the mover and being, like, more of a coach type vibe and I was going to be a nutritionist. But then we quickly scrapped that. (laughs) (laughs) Steph's Steph's passion was always with (laughs) the movement side of things. Um, She really gravitated towards that. And and I think it wasn't just that they wouldn't listen. It, it they would listen but not implement as well, right. which is which yeah. is the most it's difficult frustrating. thing. It yeah, was. you're like, I want to make change, I want to have impact, but people right. aren't doing what they say they're gonna do. Like I, mm-hmm. I show them the path. Here it is. All you have to do are these things, and then I people know. don't do it. That and, yeah. and that's why that's why we stayed away from things like one-to-one sessions mm-hmm. and personal training and things like that, because we yeah. we wanted it to be more based around education and entertainment. So my my I've I've always had a mass love for cinema. So we wanted to we wanted to create 
a media company that, that was was disguised as an athletic performance brand. So really focusing on cinematography and um, you know all, all the all the different things that are implemented. Take all this inspiration from cinema and movies, all these things I loved as a kid, and and put that into a a industry that isn't focusing on that. So you know when I when I was a kid, one of my first loves is is the United States of America is, is the first thing I can remember as a kid. It's not like my first birthdays or, uh, you know, my parents, it's literally being glued to a, a TV screen and watching. It was actually, I was obsessed with ghostbusters as a child. And I remember just being nice. obsessed with the backdrop of New York city. So oh, yeah. I would watch that every day. And sometimes I wouldn't even be watching the movie. I'd just be looking at the architecture and, that quickly quickly led on to discovering the concept behind the American dream. And once I discovered that concept when I was a really young child, I, I, I knew I had to get there because that's where I felt like I belonged. And Steph and I have been all over the world. And the reason we fought so hard to get here is, is that reason is this is the only place that we've ever felt like we belong and the opportunities that happen here don't happen everywhere else in the world. It, it's, mm -hmm. it really is uh, where dreams are made. We, we like to say we're, we're born in different countries, but we're made in the USA. Oh, I love that. And, you know, it's a great reminder for those of us that were born in the U.S. It's sometimes easy to take that for granted that we, you know, live in the land of the free and, and that you can become an entrepreneur. You know, I, I talk to people from different countries all the time who say, like, number one, you just can't go become an entrepreneur, especially depending on, you know, what, uh, I, I mean, just simple things like, uh, you know, were you born uh, a man or a woman? Were you born right. in, you know, uh, just uh, countries that ha that are a little more strict on um, the religious side of things? Uh -huh. There are so many things that are prohibitive and limit that opportunity, whereas here uh, people can do it. And I just love that you guys have, you know, even in your backdrop there, an American flag. Uh, both being from another country, but, uh, and by the way, living in other countries besides where you were born mm -hmm. and traveling to many other countries beyond that and just seeing, um, you know, just how special the U.S. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I, we say this all the time. If, if a lot of the people who, who have, you know, uh, have complaints about the United States um, had to go through the immigration process to prove that they belong here, they would have a lot less to complain about <laughs> because um, it, 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 it's like being on trial. You have, to, you have to prove that you belong here. And it's something I'm grateful for that we went through, yeah. um, which we, we can go into the details of exactly, you know, because that's kind of the story. But, man, it's, you just can't, you can't beat this place. And, you know, I, I, have, I even have the, uh, the American flag tattooed on me here. Oh, um, love it. But when we when we first pl applied for our visa and got denied, but um, yeah, I mean, we, you're we telling me that wasn't good enough. I mean, I feel like you're really committed if you're going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it, the it government just, doesn't feel the same. That, it was to remind me every day of what our what our goal was, which was ultimately to live the American dream. Yeah, that's amazing, uh, and and it is something special that we get this opportunity to. Uh, have a business or provide well for our family to, you know, have a home to like, you know, just to to live an incredible life, but on our terms. And I think some people become locked in a pattern, locked in a routine. Uh, sometimes they end up working for people or for a company that maybe served them at one point in time, but doesn't anymore. And sometimes it's hard to get away from that and escape that. But recognizing that we do have that choice, that power, mm -hmm. that freedom, and the opportunities out there are pretty darn abundant. Yes. Um, and for, you know, someone that that lives here, sometimes they don't, they don't take the massive action that that foreigners do, or you see, you see the other side of what it is where you're from or where you've lived. And you come here and you say, wow, the opportunities are abundant and I'm going to go after it. And, and that's, it's just such a common theme that I see, uh, with my friends that were born elsewhere that moved here. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we always try to say whenever anyone asks us how we are, you know, like in the gym or anything like that, the, the response is living the dream because yeah. that just that just keeps it, you know, the main the main focal point. Even on bad, everyone's got a bad day, every, everyone's got a good day, but regardless of of how you're feeling that day, you are still well. For us personally, we're still living our dream. Yeah, super every dream. day. Mm. Yeah, and um, there's a mindset around that as well. And uh, you know, I think if you are conditioning yourself to say that and think that you're going to live that. Uh, and then I think you model what your values are really well, too, because you guys are always in the gym. You guys are um, always I see you at all the healthy restaurants, right? We, I mean, we run into each other uh, planned or unplanned all the time at Sun Life Organic. Shout out to Cleo Rafati. That place is amazing. Uh, he's a mutual friend of, of all of ours. And, uh, you know, the well here in Austin is incredible. So yeah. shout out to Rich and Nicole. Yes. Um, Love the well. Two Love the well. incredible places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and f we're fortunate to have those types of places here in Austin as well. Um but yeah, I, I mean, so that was that was like the driving force be, behind phase, phase six back in when we start when we developed the concept in in Australia, because we knew we wanted to live in America. It was just we knew we wanted to live in the United States. It was just figuring out the type of value we can bring in order for us to be approved. Because you know we knew we had to bring a substantial amount of value. So, um, but. The problem was when we started phase six, we understood that we needed more knowledge as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the knowledge that we required isn't in Australia and it's, it's definitely not in the UK. The most progressive and the best innovators and industry leaders are here. So we knew that we had to get to the United States somehow. So and also establish phase six perception wise as a US based company because we we always felt like US based companies get taken a little more seriously you know uh when they say something it it, it means whether people like to admit that or not it, it is true you know and you can see that by certain types of brands trying to make it in the US and they fail mm -hmm. you know big brands because it doesn't uh it doesn't connect with the american culture you know right. yeah so well, and even uh, from an acquisition standpoint, you know, you see a lot more uh, U.S. based companies that are, are you know, investing in or completely buying, uh, you know, companies like this, media companies, brands. Right. So yes. it gives you a lot more not only ability to scale and grow, but the ability to have that nice exit at some point, too. Right. right. If, if you desire that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, we, again, like we were just scraping by, but we did have like a little nest egg that we were saving for a deposit on a house. And, um, so that's our dog. Sorry. <laughs> He's making a lot of noise back there. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we did, we did have a little nest egg that we were saving for a deposit on a house that when we originally moved to Australia, we we're going to settle down and buy a house and, you know, have a whole bunch of dogs and everything like that. So we decided to, to invest that money. We, we worked out a budget of uh, a three month trip around the United States. So the plan was to get to the United States, do a whole bunch of certifications to, to further our education, meet all the people who had inspired us, you know, um, cause we, when we first started training together and we discovered things like kettlebells, we dived deep into the rabbit hole of unconventional training. And we just wanted to meet all these people who were of course in the United States, connect with them, you know, learn from them, absorb, uh, all the knowledge that they had and then make it uniquely our own. So the plan was to invest this money into a three month trip around the United States, do all that shoot enough content for a year and a half because we figured that's how long it would probably take for our to get approved for a US visa. But also we would bring our videographer from Australia with us on the trip. Oh, that's so, so we were awesome. like paying with him. To document the entire to document the entire trip and shoot the content as well. What a great opportunity for your videographer. Yeah, yeah he, he had that's a great awesome. time. <laughs> and he'd never been out of Australia before. So, mm -hmm. you know, when he got to places like downtown Austin, it was a bit of a culture <laughs> shock to him. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, but um, so we, 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 we went to, we landed in LA and then ended up in Austin and uh, eventually New York. 
we'd com- we'd completely underestimated the budget. As so <laughs> so we we ended up leaving with New York literally with a dollar in our pocket, and we wow. still have that same dollar bill. We actually had to borrow money to get a flight out before our Esther visa expired. You know the three month visitor visa. <laughs> So, oh uh, yeah, when when we left, I was so depressed. It, it was a really depressing time. We we got back to oh. London. We stayed there for Christmas, and we knew we had to get back. So I think we left like end of November 2018. So this this was from uh, the beginning of October 2018 to the end of November 2018. Got back to London, had Christmas. You know, Christmas in London is is not the best. It's very much still like, uh, you know, a Christmas carol. It's, it's dark and <laughs> yeah, gloomy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not I feel a, like not it's that most of the year. I mean, yeah. maybe I'm wrong, but every it, time it I've been there, I feel like it's it's dark and gloomy, cloud it's covered. Really yeah. One, one, one year we were there, I think the most sun that was there, which didn't go above like 60 degrees Fahrenheit, was, was like two weeks combined in the whole year. Man. Um, so it, we knew that, and again, this was the, during our time there was the first time that we'd ever felt like we'd belong somewhere, but then leaving a place you love so much and, and not being able to stay there was, was really hard for us. So on, in January, I think it was January 9th, we flew back 2019 and we did the same thing again, not with the same videographer this time, but we, we just gained more knowledge, shot more content. So we'd have it backed up and, um, it, you know, we we didn't have a credit card or anything like that, so the only way you could rent a car was through the air through the airport on a debit card, and so we were having to to yeah, buy trips there like to different places just because we wow. couldn't rent a car, which we couldn't afford. At the time. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. <laughs> so wow. we're just doing these random trips yeah. to like L.A. and doing nothing in L.A. really because we as, couldn't do much. And as you know, you need a car Stupid. in Austin, you know, so. That's right. <laughs> um, well, it, it we makes you appreciate these... the simple things like having a credit card or right. just ha- having the having the means to be able to do stuff. I mean, yeah. I do remember the earlier days, and you got to be scrappy. You got to be resourceful, and right. uh, you're rewarded later for figuring yeah. that out. Some people aren't willing to take that chance. Mm-hmm. They're not willing to get that far out of their comfort zone where they're like, "I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do." But I think right. if you do that, if you're willing to do that, you'll be rewarded. You'll Absolutely. figure yeah, it out. I mean, there was there was many times, and there's been many times throughout, you know, especially in the in the first couple of years, where we always wanted to maintain a high quality of content. So we didn't want to shoot things on our phone. Uh, we wanted to, you know, always pay for the video. Always be. Yeah. We wanted, <laughs> yeah, we we wanted to establish that high quality c- cinematic experience, and obviously you need a videographer for that. So there was many times where Steph and I would have to choose between paying a videographer or uh, eating that night. Oh and, my goodness! And that was many times in Austin and, and Australia <laughs> and LA. Sometimes something yeah. exciting would happen, like uh, you know, uh, so- something exciting would happen, and would like, well, let's go celebrate. You know, let's go get a meal, have have a dinner out, or, or something like that. And then, as we'd be in the restaurant, something would come out that we didn't realize would come out, and then we couldn't pay. F- we'd have like a cent left in our in our bank account, and we couldn't <laughs> pay for the food. I remember this so clearly. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! You know? So, but but all all that stuff is just like like you said, it's it it builds like. Um, oh, it builds character and resilience. Resilience. But also, yeah. I, like I thought, it's important to mention that throughout this entire time, and there were like multiple times where stuff like this would happen, where majority of people would probably be like, "I'm out. Like I'm not doing this anymore." There was not one time where we looked at each other and were like, "I don't, I don't think we should do this," or "Do you think this is a good idea?" or "Shall we just try and go back to our old jobs?" There was not one time, and we didn't even have to discuss that. Like as mm. a couple, we That's just so kind of. We were both on exactly the same level. We both knew what we didn't want to do and we knew what we wanted to do. And we knew that we were on the right path because even though we encountered like these uncomfortable situations, we were still in what I believe like a flow state with it. Like good things would happen to us a lot of the time Mm. and that would keep us like continuing pushing forward. And and that's what we always like uh, link up entrepreneurship with training because training martial arts and all those types of stuff it, it, 
they help you become comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the nature of them, especially yeah. with unconventional training, strength and mobility and martial arts. So that's something that really uh, helped get through those really tough times. It was just like, this is just another uncomfortable situation that you have to get comfortable in. And Steph and I really live in one, one extreme to the other. There's a, there's a, there's like a old, I think it's like in an old army, uh, symbol. It's like victory or death. And, 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 and it has to be from one extreme to the other. We, we either have to be on this, the side of complete abundance or, and you know, or, or, there is no, there is no mediocre no. middle ground for us. You know, it, ha it has to be from one extreme to the other, different ends of the spectrum. So, feast or famine, the exactly popular phrase, right? Yeah. yeah. So you guys lived it. By yeah. the way, I would also say most entrepreneurs have lived that, Absolutely. right? Like I, I yeah. have lived that. I have. I mean, if you really want to make it as an entrepreneur, and unfortunately, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that don't make it. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they're not willing to, you know, they don't have the grit to, to, Sacrifice. you know, get through these uncomfortable hurdles, but there are very few entrepreneurs that they just come out with this idea and it takes off and it's great. And there's no right. speed bumps. And, you know, uh, most, most people develop that grit, that, that toughness, that thick outer shell. And uh, you go through a lot, you struggle and, and, you know, when you don't have it, I always feel like it's harder when you have it and lose it. Like mm -hmm. I envision that I, I've never experienced having it and losing it, but I envision that would be tougher because you actually mm -hmm. know what it feels like and tastes like, right. because when you don't have it, you're striving to get it and you're OK with whatever the circumstances are to get there. Right. Yeah. I've heard of quite a few people who have had everything and then lost it, but then got it back multiple times yep. so maybe it's a thing of like it makes them even more hungry because they're like hang on that belongs to me <laughs> like i'm gonna go get it again that's right and there's muscle like, memory for that right that's right. why people who are very wealthy can go bankrupt and build it back way right. faster yeah, yeah it's and, and and the, fu the funny thing about going through all that is that like like with anything we, we don't fear that side of things because we we got through it regardless so we we don't fear any of that you know when we were going through that, we still had each other and, you know, we still loved each other. And ultimately, like at the end of the day, that's all, it, all that matters is that, you know, we love each other and we're happy together. And then everything else is just a bonus, you know? So the, the, the hard type of things just doesn't scare us anymore, which once, once you're, when, once you have no fear, you know, any, anything's literally possible. And it's also going back to what you said about the mindset, is like having that accountability on yourself that, oh, that went wrong because of something we did or, you know, something that we could have done better. So this has happened for the for the best, really. Like it means we need to go back, regroup and do it again better. So yeah. like when you have that kind of mindset, I think it's it's easier to push forward because, you know, you take accountability and you learn from your mistakes and just keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, and, and let's talk about like how you I mean, so basically your company has really scaled in just the last few years. And it yeah. probably is like a hockey stick where it took a long time for liftoff. But now all of a sudden it's on this trajectory that's just going to the moon. Right. And I'd love to hear more about, you know, how you got that ramp up and present day, all the cool stuff that you're up to, because you guys are doing some really epic things right now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, so, yeah, I mean, that basically goes back to, you know, our, our second time in the United States in January, January till March 2019. Now, and again, we did New York, Austin and LA, Austin, New York, and then left again. But during that time, we really, we really decided, okay, we need to figure out how to get a US visa. So back in 2019, Austin wasn't as uh, sophisticated, I guess is the right word as it is now. It, it was very, very, you know, uh, Texas. And, and there was no one from New York or LA or anything like that, um, who'd, who'd, you know, moved here yet. So we, there was no like high level of immigration attorneys then. And all we really had was about $400 to spend. Actually, we didn't even have that, but we spent $400 <laughs> on wow. an immigration attorney's advice. And she advised us to apply for a, a certain type of visa. Cause again, like this was a relatively new concept. We were trying to explain it to a lawyer and, and going through all the lawyers. Now we understand why they're confused, but because this is relatively like an, a new concept, that we were developing, they couldn't understand which visa that we were apply for or the ones we suggested. 
they said was impossible for us to get, um, which the one we eventually did get the proof for, many people told us, was, many lawyers told us it was impossible. So this immigration lawyer told us to apply for a B1 and B2 visa. And if you know anything about immigration uh, visas to the US, B1, B2 visas are are like just a tourist visa, but for business. So you can stay here for six months, but um, you can't earn money. And we didn't know that. So <laughs> uh, we, we, we went back to London and we're, we're all hyped because right now we've got the, we thought we'd doing, done all the right things. We, we, we got the, the advice from a lawyer. We went to the US consulate, applied for the B1 visa. And, you know, we had workshops books, which were selling out. You know, we, we had workshops all across the United States that were selling out from phase six. And we were showing, you know, the people behind the counter all, all this, you know, revenue we're generating, really <laughs> proud of it because we're providing value to the country. Sorry. And uh, they go, sorry, you've been denied. And um, <laughs> we're, like, we're like, why? And they're like, you can't oh, earn okay. money on this visa. Oh. So, we'll, so we went back and obviously we're scrambling because, again, this is the only place we ever felt like we belonged. Mm -hmm. We knew that we belonged here and we wanted to get back there. This was just a hurdle. So we were like, it must be the B2 visa she mentioned. So we went next month, we applied for the B2 visa, denied again. Oh. So what happens with denials is once you get denied uh, a visa into the US, you're basically blacklisted from the country until you apply for the correct visa. Oh, And they couldn't tell us which visa because they're not lawyers that we applied for. So, um, you know, we were devastated. It, 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 it was basically, you know, a good few months mourning, not understanding <laughs> yeah. why this was happening to us. And, you know, you can only connect the dots backwards. So we understand now why we were denied yes. at that time. But, um, while we're trying to figure this out, we're like, right, how can we make the most of this situation into a positive? And the realization that we only needed one visa, you know, like everyone else in the US that we, we were associated with, or they needed multiple visas to do things that like workshops or events mm -hmm. in Europe and Australia and everything else. So we're like, right, we'll just, we'll spread our philosophy to as many countries as we can in the meantime and figure this out, you know, um, and then we'll get back to the US. So we we launched our first ever program, which did really well. And that, that was the, I think it was July 9, 2019 was when we first, Steph looked at a bank account one morning and was like, we have money. And we we're like, what do you mean we have money? I was like, because <laughs> we haven't had money in so long. Um, I think it's real. And, and that really like uh, put us in on the snowball effect of everything else that led up to like present day. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do a world tour of, of workshops and events. So we went to London, Italy, uh, and a whole tour of Australia. And this went from 2019 to, t uh, March of 2020. Uh, and, and they all sold out and it was, it was a really good time. And then obviously the world locked down. We, we, our last, our last event was actually like, I think a week before, the whole world locked down. Oh, thank goodness you got that in. And we didn't really know, did we? We we didn't know what's happening because we don't watch the news or anything. So one day we and we lived in a place called the Sunshine Coast, which is a little surfer town. Is is if anyone could go to the Sunshine Coast, it's like a paradise in Noosa and Coolum Beach. It, it it's like heaven on earth. Um, it's it's just unfortunately so far away from the rest of the world. <laughs> but if you ever want to reset, you go there. And it's a real small town. And we went to the supermarket, and then suddenly all the all the toilet paper was gone. It was like that's weird. And then we walked down the other rail, and all the flour and sugar is gone. It's like that's really weird. It was like, oh, we'll just come back tomorrow <laughs> to get some toilet paper. And then it was like three weeks, and there was still no toilet paper. And um, then then there was signs saying like, due to what the lockdowns there's limited amounts of people can buy it. So we decided we, we better find out what's going on. And, and that's how we found out. We didn't even, we didn't even find out till like three weeks later, wow. something was happening. And, um, but fast forward. Yeah. So, uh, we managed to find a, we, we ended up like jumping around the world to avoid heavily locked down areas. So by July, we'd left Australia and we went to London because there was a gray area of what the rules were. So we hosted a, another event at the Roger Gracie Academy in London. Oh, nice. And then that started to lock down. And, um, Mexico. Yeah. They were, they were talking in, in the UK, they were talking about canceling Christmas and everything like that and New Year's. So oh we goodness. went to Mexico <laughs> and, uh, yeah, 
the um by Mexico, we found a lawyer who believed in us and we eventually applied for an O-1 visa and that took uh, from March and we were approved in January of, of 2022. Um, but like I said before that, many people who we saw told us that getting an O-1 visa was impossible because mm -hmm. this was for people like established entrepreneurs or athletes and things like that. So we basically had to build a case, basically like being on trial, of, yeah. of of establishing that we were a world renowned brand um and and submitting that sorry sorry <laughs> and submitting <laughs> that to um the united states government and and we had uh we had people from the from the u s army like writing us letters like wanting us to be there and, and a few other people that we know um we we just resourced as many connections that we we had at that time. And yeah, th and then we we were here. It was, <laughs> it, it's kind of a weird experience because we'd built Phase Six up to being this world-renowned brand, to presenting it to the U.S. government to say that they they, they recognize us as a uh, a world-renowned brand as brand as well. But then once you land in the U.S., it's almost like ground zero again. It's like what everything that you did doesn't matter because now we have to prove it to the 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 citizens of the united states of america right. you know what i mean so right and they don't know about your yeah, brand yet yes i mean fortunately you haven't been able like, to do any events in the u.s yeah we right so they few here and there obviously know us from social media and stuff but nothing like the workshops and in person and it was all very vague scattered yeah so um so a bit cool. like as you said you know in, in that short we we got here, I think, by the end of January 2022, and, and in those two short years, uh, you know, we've we've grown our social media presence substantially from then. I mean, it was it was quick before, but um, you know, our, our TikTok channels just by using the formulas we've created and everything like that to create content and the way we shoot, we we built our Instagram to a substantial amount of uh, audience members, but then we also did exactly the same on TikTok in six months of what we, wow. e even more to the, to the amount that we did like in four years. years. Yeah. Like four or five years. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and we're talking for you guys, it's millions of followers. You've got uh, multiple channels that have like on a monthly basis reached over 15 million views. So it's yes. like, these are big numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on average around, yeah. Um, around 15, 15 million views per month on on separate channels, and we, we've got quite a few. There's there's Steph and myself's personal channels, you know, Phase Six, Phase Six, the the uh, fitness side of things. Six we just started Phase Six Media um, Instagram, and obviously the Phase Six Content Dojo as well. And, and Steph, myself, and Phase Six is all on TikTok as well, and obviously the YouTube as well. So you know, it's multiple channels, and when we manage all that we ourselves, we don't have any outsourcing on that. So we handle all the posting and the the script writing and the filming and everything like that. And and that's what led us to working with high profile brands as well. More, we we always wanted to be more than just you know like a, a ambassador for a company. We wanted mm -hmm. to help with the inner workings of everything because, as I said, Phase Six is a fitness brand disguised as a media brand. Uh, yeah, that, that's the right way around, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So ba <laughs> basically how like, you know, when McDonald's say, says it's not a it's not part of the fast food industry, it's, it's, it's real estate. You yep. know, it's a similar thing to that. Yeah, I love that. And, and it's cool because you guys took your passion, which is fitness. You built a company around it. But you also took another passion, which is cinemato cinematography and photography and content creation. And you're able to build a separate business under the same umbrella, right? Mm -hmm. So kind of like two different structures. And then on top of it, which uh, hopefully you talk about this now, is um, your content dojo, which yeah. is this world-class building with impeccable lighting at every angle <laughs> with, with a backdrop of color that uh, is the right shade that allows you to pop out, whether right. you're wearing black or whatever. I'm glad you remembered that. Yeah, yes. cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, uh, so... So that that 
This is invite only, so I just want to make sure that people understand it's an exclusive, uh, you know, group of people that actually make the cut. But tell us about it, because yeah. I, I would guarantee we've got listeners that probably would make the cut. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it, it basically was born out of a necessity. First off, we we always wanted our own space to, to film at. So it, we, as I mentioned, we've been all around the world and, and we we're filming content in every country that we're being in it at that same time as well. Um, but un unfortunately, and, and this is no fault to the locations is that, you know, you're filming in gym. So you have, you have to be, um, someone else's schedule. Yeah. You have to be understanding of the, like the members and, you know, shooting times and things like that, but it limits the amount of content you can create at one time, uh, and the volume you can create content as well. And, you know, what we want to film a lot of content and, uh, you know, have the perfect lighting, like you mentioned. And, you know, sometimes you're in a place and the lighting isn't correct or the paint isn't right. So you do get drowned in the background and, you know, all, all these types of stuff. So it was kind of created out of a necessity for us to be able to elevate our content creation mm -hmm. and, and bring more value through phase six, um, to the world, but also provide a space for people who need to shoot that type of content as well, you know, because the content dojo, basically the visual aspect of it is it's, it's half like a, a functional unconventional training gym space. So, you know, all the kettlebells, squat racks, Olympic lifting, deadlifts, calisthenic rig, all that stuff, turf sleds. But then the other side is a, is a MMA jujitsu academy. And it's, it's the build out was done by, uh, by Fuji mats who, you know, are world renowned for, in the martial arts space, but they're just transitioning into the, the gym build out space as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I love yeah. it. And this is a massive space too, right? Like how, how big is this? Uh, 5,500, including the reception area. So about 5,000. Yeah. That's the amazing. content dojo is 5,000 square feet and it, it's just huge and large ceilings, high ceilings. The, the, the weird thing about, well, not weird, but the as you know the construction was kind of quick um mm -hmm. you know it was only six weeks it's for unbelievable construction build for a guy that waited for his home to be built for <laughs> over two years a whole year longer than it was supposed to i am blown away <laughs> that you're able to get this done in six weeks well, it's, and and that comes we're actually speaking to uh, one of the coaches at collective about this yesterday is it just came down to preparation because as we were building you know phase six we um i still have the drawing it's it's in the drawer but i drew out the the floor plan with a sharpie and a pencil uh, of what we wanted this space to look like mm. and then we invested money that we actually shouldn't be investing in in renders and floor plans but just so we would have a, an actual visual yeah. representation of what we wanted to build and it's 3D walkthrough. And yeah. if anyone ever asked us, like, oh, what's the what's the plan? We could visually show them rather than explaining. Mm -hmm. And I've shown you the renders and I've shown you the the uh the end result and they're identical. You know, it, there's That's things so in there cool. that weren't even created yet that we've had customized built mm -hmm. by you know Fuji brand, uh F Fuji mats. So it it took you know, six weeks of construction, but it was actually four four years of preparation. Yep. So all we had to do was all we knew was we had to get to the U.S. and then we just had to fit our our, <laughs> our uh, dream into a space. We just had to find a blank canvas, and and that's what we found here in Austin. And and there isn't any, in my opinion, any any better place to do that in mm -hmm. the United States right oh, now. Hundred percent. And not only that, your location's incredible. I know I'm not allowed to say where it is because only people that get approved can actually get the address. But uh, it's really close to me, and and um, I just. I think you're absolutely right. Austin is a special place. Um, it it is attracting, and and you just have these people that are gravitating to this to this you know ecosystem here that are entrepreneurs, investors, uh, tech minded uh, people. You've got influencers. You just it's it's really the, the pull of Austin to grab these people from all these major markets all around the US and the world is really incredible. So I agree, there's no better place you could have had it. And by the way, because of the success of, of phase six, uh, because of being able to create content like you're, you're able to do and now having a studio where you can create even better content, and you can have others that want that 
high quality content come and rent it out and um, you know, get to utilize it. You've also been able to strike some pretty awesome partnerships and and do some uh, deals with brands like Vivo, uh, Barefoot, and Hydro mm-hmm. Flask, like some some pretty big brand names. You're you guys have been able to become advisors for different companies like Noble, the the protein mm-hmm. powder that oh, uses great, you know all the uh, you know the, the parts of the body or the parts of the animal rather that. Uh, most just kind of throw out and they'll use it, right? The spleen yeah. and uh, everything all ground up yeah. into a powder that tastes really good. Yeah, yeah. It, and it does. And that, that it really does. It really does, especially <laughs> the chocolate. The, those guys are incredible and extremely humble and, and they just want to connect. They're so selfless in, in just giving and, and they're just always a real um, – joy to bring around that very, very positive. Very nice I thought it was going to freak out my wife because, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff just, it's not the most appetizing sounding thing. And sometimes she <laughs> can be a little, you know, skittish on that. Uh, but she had no problem. She's like, it tastes so yeah. good. I, I wouldn't have known. And I know that stuff's good for me. So it's a great way to disguise it. So I consume it. Yeah. Right? It, it's incredible. And uh, working with all those brands was, was, just being patient as well mm-hmm. with with sticking to high quality content, you know. So all those yeah. all those hard times paid off, uh, and we've only ever we've only worked in the past five years. We've only worked with a handful of people because we focus on building long term partnerships. So with with Vivo Barefoot, for example, we talked to them for three and a half years, maybe four years before we accepted any type of deal with them because when we first met them the shoes didn't work for what we did so we couldn't we couldn't authentically promote them and i know the word authentically gets thrown around like a lot nowadays but we we most, most uh popular or important it was the word of the year right for 2023 <laughs> yeah. authenticity so, That's funny. With, with vivo barefoot it was more like we really need to test this out and make sure that it, it's something that we would be happy to share and i think it was just before we were leaving for the US, once our visa was approved, that they took us to this gym in London and they had a sit down and they just hired all these guys from major uh, conventional shoe companies like Nike, Adidas, you know, Vans, New Balance. And they'd all hired these guys to make it more stylish and functional as well. And they listened to us for a good few, like three or four hours about why, why their shoes weren't working for us you know, how it works with our foot when we're doing the unconventional training movements and ground-based locomotion, strength and mobility movement patterns. And then they, our our relationship's grown even then. So it's more like a friendship than, Mm -hmm. than that's cool. Than a business. That's where it gets special. That's why I love being in this world of business, investing, advising, because with the right, I mean, I'm not going to spend time with, with the groups that I don't feel like I resonate with or with people that I don't resonate with. But when you do spend this time and you help them and they see results and together you're winning, it yeah. really forms a really cool friendship and bond that's just so special and it makes what we do so rewarding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I have to I have to show my appreciation. Well, but from Steph and myself for you because mm-hmm. you you've been nothing but generous. You know, when something's come up and I'm like, hey, I need advice on this, or do you know someone who knows something about this? You've just and I know how busy you are and you, you freely just give us, you know, introductions without questions. So I, we are really grateful for your yes. friendship too. Well, it's my pleasure. And I, I've got to say one of my favorite things in the world is this whole uh, idea around business matchmaking and connecting mm-hmm. people that I think need to know each other that should be doing business together or should uh, you know, even if it's just a simple single transaction, I need this done. I like doing that, but it's even more fun for me when there's, uh, something that can live longer and beyond. And, and I just, uh, I see it all that I see it so clearly where I just have this, um, clarity around this person needs to meet this person. I don't know the exact details. I just know they need to meet. And I love that. That's really cool. Thank you, brother. Again, <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, you guys have a big event coming up here um, for the the content dojo. So talk about that, and then tell us where we can find out more about you. Great. Yeah. Uh, so, along with the content creation side of things, we really want the dojo to be focused on education and events, and and that's not s- specific to athletic performance. You know, um, we want people to learn about you know finance and entrepreneurship and. Uh, 
you know, self-development and all these things, because that's, that's something we've implemented heavy into the philosophy behind phase six. So along with the content side of things, we'll be hosting events with ourselves, other industry leaders and brands that we work with. So the next one will, will be in April. I'm not sure of the exact date yet, but that'll be a, a uh, partner. That'll be an event that will have Vivo Barefoot there as well. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And, um, yeah, it, it's it's going to be really cool, and then then there'll be many many events throughout the year. People like uh, Roger Gracie will be coming down. He's never done an event in. Who's a ten time Brazilian Jiu Jitsu world champion. He's also considered the greatest of all time by many, and uh, he's never done an event in Austin. Fortunately, wow. we're good we're good friends with him, and he's agreed to do a event at some point. He's a very busy man, of course, and and so it'll be a mixture of you know. All, all these types of people just bring their expertise and knowledge to to Austin at the Content Dojo. So the, the next big one will be in April. And uh, you can find us at uh, www.phase6online.com. And that's the athletic performance side of things where, you know, you can you can find our programs if you're interested in that or free eBooks or articles we've written. And then if you want to find out more information about the Content Dojo, mm -hmm. it's uh, www.phase6dojo.com and Love on it. there you can see the request to book sign if you were interested in booking the space out and we, we got some really cool people going to shoot content there as well like uh, this this guy just reached out to us who's a stunt coordinator and fight choreographer for big marvel and uh, other movies and TV shows on Apple TV and things like that. And what he does, he's building an online platform for stunt performers to learn online, but then also doing seminars as well. That's so cool. Well, I, and I love it because it doesn't have to be fitness. It can be mm -hmm. anything. Like you said, it can be any type of education. It can be any type of, of you know, filming that you want to do. Yeah. And uh, I, I hope, yeah, I, I would just say, take these guys up on their um, invitation to apply because you're going to get the best lighting that's out there. Uh, you know, the everything is going to be set to have your product show better than what it would probably anywhere else. And so mm -hmm. uh, if you're wanting for like high quality, uh, you know, great from a sound standpoint, great from a lighting standpoint, you know, check it out. Yeah, I mean, we, we, the whole place is actually soundproof too. So, you know, the lighting, we, we, we made sure the lighting was perfect. So it didn't cast a shadow. So even if a videographer was, you know, from the distance of myself and Steph away, you know, only a shoulder width apart, there would never be a, a shadow cast on you and things like that. And, um, you know, podcast could be shot there and everything it's, it's going to be a really yeah. really cool um spot to be and and it is a creative space so if anyone is in that creative mindset it's it's like a playground in that there are no well, rules <laughs> next time we'll have to do a podcast episode in your studio i, I think that would be that. fun um you guys this has been just a blast jay steph thanks so much for spending the time here telling us all about the cool things you're up to phase six um content dojo just everything it's really neat seeing uh what you've created and and where it's headed and i know that you know things are going to get even bigger and better and brighter uh as the days continue so uh, i like wrapping up every episode with a question to our audience. It's just a simple question and it's this, what is one step that you can take today to move forward and move towards financial freedom and living a life that you truly desire, but it's one that's on your terms. It's not a life by default, but rather a life by design. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> that's a good question. That's really cool. Love well, it. Well, you thank you guys so much. And uh, you, I'll brother. see you probably at the gym tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Get off. <laughs> See you then. Thank All you right. so much. Take See care. You. <laughs>